Okay, I'll begin the webinar now. So a very good afternoon to all the panelists and attendees. I'm Kushi Javeri from Keo University. And today we are here for the Google Network Project of University of Tokyo in the office. This project aims to attract students primarily from South Asia to encourage them to pursue their further studies in Japan. In today's webinar, we have been joined by a couple of renowned universities in Japan. Each of these universities will give us a 20 minute presentation about their programs offered at undergraduate, graduate and doctoral levels, followed by a final Q&A session. Students are free to ask questions to our panelists in the Q&A box and not the chat box. Once again, please make sure to ask your questions in the Q&A box. And panelists, please make sure to turn off your video and audio when not presenting. Now I share the agenda of today's webinar. I hope everyone can see my screen. So we'll commence the webinar by a brief introduction by Ms. Sakshi, the program assistant of Utopia in the office. And then we'll have a presentation for overview of study and work life in Japan by Ms. Sakshi Verma from Mitsumeikan APU, followed by a presentation by Kyoto University of Advanced Sciences by Mr. Takeda, the international office director. Then we'll have a presentation by Tokyo International University by Mr. Ben, the admission counselor. And lastly, we have a presentation by Akita University by Professor Mishima from the Graduate School of Engineering Science. Now I'd like to request Ms. Sakshi to commence the webinar by, with a brief introduction. Thank you very much, Ms. Kushi, for your kind introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar, Study and Work in Japan, Session 20. And thank you for uh, taking time to join us today. We have a lot of useful information to share with you. Uh, my name is Sakshi Ren. I'm the program assistant here with the University of Tokyo in the office. And today we are presenting Study and Work in Japan, Session 20 to you, uh, which is hosted by the University of Tokyo in the office and is sponsored by MIX, the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. So uh, through all these sessions, our mission is to introduce Japanese universities to you and to assist you to study and work in Japan. Um, I'll tell you, our office is a part of a Study in Japan Global Network Project in Southwest Asia by MEXT, and we provide comprehensive information on Japanese universities at free of cost. And we also organize uh, education fairs and seminars throughout India. So um, in our webinars, you'll get to know about all the programs that are offered in English by prestigious and well-known Japanese universities. And the most interesting part is uh, your queries will be directly answered by university representatives. So there will be three to four different Japanese universities representing in each session, national, public, and private universities. I request you all to please stay tuned with us till the end of the session. And I know 20 minutes presentation is very short time to understand about the university procedures, but it's okay if your question hasn't been answered during the session. I request all our attendees to please uh, note down the contact addresses of uh, respective universities, and then you can directly uh, you know, ask them uh, later on by writing them. So yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's session. And please don't forget to uh, register for our future webinars um, every Friday and Saturday till 28th August. So please register for all of the sessions and attend all our webinars to learn about opportunities to study and work in Japan. Um, I hope it will help you to consider studies in Japan, seizing the opportunity to build an even uh, brighter and more fulfilling future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Sakshi, for the introduction. Um, we'll proceed with today's agenda. I'll reshare the agenda slide. So now I'd like to request Ms. Sakshi Varma to give us an overview of study and work life in Japan. Thank you, Ms. Kushi. Uh, can you allow me to share my screen? Okay, I hope it's visible. Yes, we can see your presentation. Okay, thank you so much. So good evening, everybody. Uh, I am Sakshi Verma, and I am from Ritsumeika Asia Pacific University, and which is located in uh, Kitakyo in Kyushu uh, in Beppu. And today I'm going to talk about uh, the the journal perspective uh, of the of a, like from a point of view of a student uh, regarding the study and work in Japan. So let's continue. Uh, 
So before beginning with this presentation, I would like to uh, explain, uh, give you a brief introduction about myself. So I'm Sakshi and I was born and raised in New Delhi. I completed my uh, bachelor's in journalism from University of Delhi. And simultaneously, I was uh, like, I started learning Japanese language and culture course, cultural course from the Japan Foundation New Delhi office. Uh, I was actually a very much into Japanese language. So I started learning Japanese at a very, um, like from my undergraduate uh, and I started, like I wanted to continue at a advanced level. So I gave JLPT and I cleared my JLPT N2 within uh, India. Uh, after that, I started working with Japan Foundation New Delhi office as a PR coordinator. And then I was working with Ritsume Kan India office as an assistant manager. And right now, currently after that, like after, uh, like after working as an employee, I went to Japan for my training and I thought that, oh wow, why, sh why can't I, be the way as the current students are in Japan. Like I also wanted to have that kind of experience in Japan. So let me try for my highest education. So uh, that's what uh, made me realize that I should uh, apply for MBA uh, in Ritsume Kanisha Pacific University. So right now I'm a like second year student and specializing marketing and management. And lastly, um, I'm a uh, scholarship recipient called Otsuka Toshimi Scholarship. It's a public scholarship uh, which is given by Otsuka Foundation, which is situated in Osaka. So, uh, like most of us are here regarding this, like why, why should we uh, choose Japan as a career destination? Well, uh, according to this Global Peace Index, uh, which was uh, in 2019, Japan was ranked as number nine. And Japan is basically a country with rich cultural heritage and rich uh, history. So also the fact that there's like the most interesting thing about Japan is that they, they offer the all the Japanese universities will offer you some kind of scholarship, which is like one of the most important criteria for us who are seeking to study uh, in Japan. So uh, to continue with this, uh, so there are Japanese uh, universities, uh, which is like three type of Japanese universities, which is national, public and private. So national uh, universities are basically founded by Japanese government. The public universities are like in a collaboration with local public entities and the private are based on the founders. So currently where I am studying, I am studying in a private university. So uh, to talk about the program offered by these Japanese universities, we have undergraduate, which is uh, approximately of four years. Unlike in India, which, have, uh, which you usually have three years. So in Japan, you will find a four years uh, undergraduate bachelor's degree. Uh, then comes the graduation, uh, like uh, your graduation will be approximately two years, depending upon uh, what kind of program you have selected. Some, some of them uh, also complete their bachelor's in 1.5 years, but the standard is two years. And third is about the doctoral degree, which is approximately three to four years. So uh, it depends upon university, university, but uh, Japanese universities offers you a lot of, a lot of, lot of good infrastructures, good student life, like you can enjoy your life in university dormitory, you, you have a student lounge, you before going to the Japanese, you know, like uh, applying for these Japanese universities, you can also research about the research labs for the most of the science people. And of course, there are many uh, libraries as well, like it's, uh, it's a normal common thing in every university. So uh, to talk about our um, admissions to the Japanese university. So the thing is, uh, it depends upon the university to university. So in my case, basically, I was a graduate student. So I had to write a research proposal because uh, it, like this is the standard in Japan. Like if you're going for the graduation or higher, you need to have some kind of research proposal uh, and a, a kind of a idea in your mind that what will you research and what will you write for your graduation, like uh, graduation thesis. So you need to have that kind of idea and you need to contact those uh, university representatives and the professors basically who is into your line, who is like basically related to your research. So you need to find out, uh, find out that before applying to the universities. As regarding to the bachelors, uh, maybe you need to give a kind of a common entrance exam uh, in order to clear that and some kind of Japanese exam as well, just to test your basic Japanese language. That's about it. I don't think you need to worry about more Japanese language because you, the university somehow they teach you Japanese language within your four years during your bachelor's degree. So yeah, regarding the student uh, and peace and living expenses in Japan, 
let me tell you honestly i was also worried before coming to japan that oh will i get any kind of scholarship because i was a tuition reduction i only got the tuition reduction as a private and i was a privately funded student but i applied uh, to various scholarships after coming to japan and luckily i got a very good scholarship so i would suggest that don't you don't need to worry about how will you bear your living expenses and tuition fees because you will definitely end up uh, having any kind of scholarships because there are many private entities which uh, is in collaboration with the universities you choose so you will definitely get about it and regarding the living expenses in japan uh, there is a organization called jeso so jeso is associated with a lot of universities and it is only basically for all the uh, like the privately funded students they will provide you approximately uh, like 48000 yen per month for your living expenses so that will be post entry after once you enter into the japan so to continue with my next uh, slide okay so regarding the job opportunities in japan uh there is the one tip which i want to give to all the potential students is that you need to start your job hunting one year before you graduate because japanese companies are very particular about it like they will like for example if you're graduating in april 2022 you need to start uh, sorry in march 2022 you need to start your uh, job hunting in say approximately like july so because they are very much uh, like they actually they try and uh, complete their graduation process so their recruitment process asap so you need to be very aware about that and there are many big companies like there are uniqlo and uh, say panasonic mitsubishi so i mean uh, that depends upon your university the which university uh, basically your uh, career uh, office in your university so maybe you can contact them regarding the job job opportunities in japan and of course as we all know that we need to have the basic japanese language as well as uh, the advanced japanese language once you are into the university so because japanese language is the main criteria on which they uh, judge you so uh, like do try to take your jlpt approximately n2 which is the main uh, main requirement of the job so this is i'm not going into the detail of this uh, uh, this data maybe you can just have a look so uh, regarding the job opportunities and the number of employments uh, in japan so india ranks approximately this much right now so maybe you can just have a this kind of look also i would suggest you to go through the embassy of japan website because there you might find out a lot of good details uh, regarding the job and the employment opportunities for people who are looking uh, into japan so okay so lastly i want to talk about my life in japan basically as a student i might i must tell you that i am having a lot good time in japan because while i was working i was literally working but while i am a student i am working as well as i am having a good time uh, for example like i am teaching english as a part time job uh, as a part time to a lot of japanese students uh, i am going on a research field trip so this is the research field trip which we did we uh, basically with my professors we climbed up uh, to, to the mountains and we just had a good photos and this was uh, in kyoto i went to kyoto for just a normal vacation and i was learning shamisen uh in my university and we also made a bamboo bell uh, it's a kind of a workshop so which was provided in my university and i was volunteering for uh, most of the japanese uh, small grocery shops i was a volunteer for that and yeah so i mean as a student you will definitely end up having a lot of bytos just make sure that you divide equal time to your studies as well as bytos so that brings and uh, to the end of my presentation and if you have any queries feel please feel free to write in the q and a section thank you very much thank you so much ms sakshi verma for the very insightful presentation um i reshare the agenda slide so now we have a presentation by uh, presentation by kyoto university of advanced sciences so kyoto university of advanced sciences is an eminent private university with an all english engineering program that is globally well acclaimed owing to its remarkable contribution to advancing technologies one of the most powerful ceos of japan mr nagamori shigenobu founded the faculty of engineering to create a new generation of smart engineers that work in different sectors of japan So now I'd like to request Mr. Takeda to give us an insight into the university. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ms. Kushi. Kind of introduction for me. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, my name is Takeda. I work at the Kyoto University of, of Advanced Science as an international uh, director. Now, I'll be pleased to introduce our all new and exciting engineering multi multidisciplinary engineering program. Are you uh, that is con, uh, conducted entirely in English language you know, for the benefits of international students like you? Just a second, I'll, your, um, I'll be starting sharing screen with you now. We can see your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm uh, before getting to the details about you know, our city Kyoto or also you know, Kyoto University of Advanced Science KUAS. Uh, why don't I play a short video clip about us so that you can feel more comfortable about uh, who we are, where we are located, and you know, what we do in. Kyoto. What's in Kyoto? What's KUAS? Kyoto, the old capital of Japan, is home to many of Japan's most important world heritage sites. While Kyoto is well known as a popular tourist attraction, the largest and most important economy in Kyoto is its manufacturing and technology sector. Situated at this crossroads of history, technology, culture, and nature is Kyoto University of Advanced Science, a new type of university that seeks to incorporate Kyoto's cultural wealth into international, state-of-the-art education. Here is a look at some of the facilities the building features. The workshops are available for free to students 24 hours a day and provide the tools and materials to craft nearly anything imaginable. Elsewhere in the building, challenging research is being carried out every day. There is also a large library, ideal for self-study as well as group discussions. The Faculty of Engineering has great facilities, but that's not all the school has to be proud of. The professors teaching at KUAS hail from all over the world. All lectures are held in English. In addition, all international engineering students are provided with intensive Japanese language courses. The Capstone Project, the first of its kind in Japan, is designed to pit teams of students against realistic challenges presented by over 50 real companies. These unique features will allow KUAS graduates to work immediately anywhere in the world. KUAS represents a new model of university unlike Japan has ever seen. Join us at KUAS and be a street smart global engineer. Today, I'm going to cover uh, why Kyoto, uh, Kyoto University of Advanced Science, and, uh, our Faculty of Engineering undergraduate programs, uh, also followed by its tuition fees and application procedures. And I will touch upon our postgraduate programs uh, briefly, and I will also share with you our contact details for your uh, further inquiries at the end. 
So why Kyoto? So as, as, you can, as you see here, you know, Kyoto is the one of the most beautiful, beautiful city in the world. Um, as Kyoto was the capital of Japan for a thousand years, you know, dozens of national culture treasures are located in Kyoto, as you see here. Um, and uh, also, if you were happen to be a big fan of co uh, comic books, anime, or manga, and the Kyoto may be the maybe a place for you to visit, as there is a are several museums that specifically exhibit and these beautiful comic books and animes for our uh, fans like you. And then this is in our, our this is in the our beautiful faculty of engineering and building. And let me discuss in the KUNS history. It is started in 1969. It's in the government Japanese government accredited private university. And it's located it in, in Kyoto Prefecture. It has uh, 3,600 students and uh, it, has, uh, it offers programs at five faculties, including our brand new faculty of in engineering. And, and at our engineering school alone, there are 80 international students from 20 countries. And on uh, moving toward the right, and you see our KUS, where KUS is, is located. And actually it's located at the at the center, at the heart of Japan, with a good access to our two major cities in Osaka or Tokyo. It's, it's uh, uh, KUS, as you see, uh, conveniently located at the center of Japan. And uh, I am very proud to share with you this great news that you know, KUS is going to three Indian undergraduates hosting uh, KUS is going to host three Indian undergraduate students enrolling in September, uh, just, a, uh, uh, just a, you know, or just months away. And, and uh, you, may, you maybe also are be proud to know that there are two Indian female students out of these three Indian students enrolling on our engineering, our undergraduate engineering programs. In addition, our, I am very proud, we are all proud to have our one more Indian math students enrolling in the same month next, uh, next month in 2021. Let me discuss the features of the Faculty of Engineering. Number one, our program is a conduct, conducted in, entirely in English language for the benefits of inter, international students like you. And number two, uh, still we offer you on intensive Japanese classes at no additional cost in you know, help you or, or find a job opportunities by speaking to a Japanese speaking personnel with a Japanese in our company, in your companies that is still predominantly Japanese or Japanese speaking environment. Number three, our program is very practical where you can have opportunities even opportunity, even to be able to uh, closely with work closely with the engineers who are now work as a professional engineers in Japanese companies. And number four, uh, in, in job hunting for your job for your job hunting, um, you can be uh, assured to know that there is a specific department at KUS that has been. Uh, specifically assigned to help international students like you to find job opportunities with Japanese companies. This is our, uh, our undergraduate program focuses are uh, called KUS Mechanical and Electrical System Engineering Programs where you can cover uh, all these society majors on just one program, ranging, uh, ranging from automation control, computer engineering, electrical and electrical, and mechanical, also computer sciences as well. Uh, more specifically speaking, our multidisciplinary disciplinary engineering program, pro, program is going to put uh, computing and, and data processing at the center of our programs. Moving to the left, uh, you'll be also expected to have um, to have 
comprehensive, um, a comprehensive understanding of mechanical engineering as well, and then moving to the right, uh, you also are be covering uh, electrical engineering aspects as, as well on the same programs. So um, by the end of uh, by the end, by the time you graduate from our programs, you be are knowledgeable about computing and data processing and mechanical engineering, also electrical engineering, to be successful as a skilled engineers in the real world of engineering world. And let me pick a few prof. Our, uh, one of our prominent professors, uh, uh, Dr. Ian Pimuter, uh, who used to work as a senior executive at, you know, at Hewlett Packard in California. Now, he now teaches at KUS in order to uh, provide uh, our knowledge uh, with the students like you know, meta programming, embedded in an IoT technology, virtual machines, and you know, a dynamic code generation at the bottom. Uh, and as you see at the bottom. So if you are particularly interested in computing or computer sciences, he's gonna be a great mentor for you while at KUS. And uh, let me also, or uh, another, or uh, let me also discuss, I uh, introduce another uh, prominent professor, Dr. Zidu Leon, who has a strong background in the uh, writing of codes or programming, or, for uh, developing and wearable, de developing a software program specifically for wearable devices. Um, she's also go going to be a great mentor uh, for, uh, for you while at KUS if you are interested in the uh, uh, um, co um, writing codes or um, data collection or a human computer interaction or also our interested in uh, developing on uh, software programs for all uh, wearable devices. And uh, the culmination of our in undergraduate program is the uh, uh, capstone project where you are have opportunities to work closely with the uh, engineers who are now working as a professional engineers in the Japanese companies. Going and uh, going and visit them, visit them and to learn about the issues that they are they are currently faced as a professional engineers, and you are you can are you be develop you be expected to develop your own solutions for improvement for their feedback uh, over two years. Um, by doing this, you know, you'll be expected to uh, develop your uh, knowledge and the skills that you can you take advantage to be our. Uh, to start or start to work immediately for Japanese companies upon the completion of a program as an engineer. Tuition costs uh, is around fourteen thousand dollars per year. Um, uh, cost, uh, as you see uh, the, at the bottom, living in Kyoto is around one thousand one thousand dollars a hundred one thousand two hundred per month. And it's very interesting to see our, our huge differences among the different countries and for tuition costs. And if you choose to go to UK, you'll be spending, you need to have to shoulder the, as much as you know, $43,000 per year just for tuition. Whereas in KUS, and for the same quality of engineering program, you only need to pay $14,000, which makes a huge difference and depending on the, the choice of a your, your choice of a country, which country you go to the, for the same quality of engineering a program. Um, uh, application timelines in the, for, uh, for undergraduate programs is starts on October 1st and December 1st and for uh, February 15th. Um, we have uh, three different in application entry cycles. And, uh, you can choose uh, either of them uh, depending on your uh, readiness. Uh, application documents are application documents a preparation. And but uh, I'm all the, I'm talking all about these uh, entry cycles and uh, toward September 2020 program intake. 
application documents, uh, starting with an ID photo application essay, transcripts, and the number four set, uh, certificate of graduation, or or you can use or number five, you can use a CBS E predictive scores, SAT, A level and IB scores in, in order to apply for KUS. Entry requirements are given that any are uh, given the nature of any engineering program uh, in the world. So you'll be expected to have cover or uh, have a comprehensive understanding of physics and the math equivalent to a high school level. And also uh, you'll be expected to have covered algebra, geometry, precalculus, statistics, the force motion, and waves of electricity and, and the magnetism atom structures. Um, you also need to, you also be required to give us your, our English, your English proficiency test scores so to be eligible in terms of English, your English proficiency as our program is conducted entirely in English language. Um, our professor, uh, ad, for admission criteria for undergraduates, you know, we, our professor would like to see you in, see your overall strong GPA in, in grade 10, especially grade 10 and 11, uh, 12. And uh, our professors, they will also like to see your good track records in the physics and the math. And um, they also like to have our students who have notable predicted CBSE or SAT IB scores. And or they also like to have students have, or who have a strong determination to pursue studies at KUS, not other engineering schools. And uh, if invited, uh, definitely our professors would, would like to see your great interview performance or performance. And also, are, uh, they uh, like to em they are emphasize uh, your strong character matching with our program goals. Um, yes, we are. Uh, let me also share with you the, uh, good news that uh, yes, we do also our, our run our masters and programs and for masters and doctoral levels as well. And let me just share with you now what we do at the postgraduate levels so briefly. So our core areas, mechanical, electrical, electronic, electro mechanical, computer science. And if you are interested in you know, one of these areas, your, your main academic interest, and also you have a research proposal for our professors, you'll be eligible to apply for KUS engineering program at the postgraduate levels as well. But make sure that you are, now our, our, our pre-application screening will start on October 18th in 2021. And even meaning that even before you officially invite us to apply and to KUS and postgraduate programs, you need to go through this particular pre-application reviewing process conducted by our professors. For more detailed information, or you can visit our website uh, as you see here. I pause here. Uh, you want to take a snapshot of a uh, screenshot of this page? Yes, you can go ahead and take a snap, uh, take a screenshot for more for more detailed information about our postgraduate program. Uh, Lastly, uh, before wrapping up my presentation, I'm um, more than happy to share with uh, this great news uh, for your convenience and for your assurance. We are KUS has an uh, in official Indian representative working for RK, working with the KUS for free consultation. So if you have any further inquiries, please contact Meg Ms. Megumi Paul as managing director at Focal Edge. And as you see, here is the contact details, as you see at the bottom, uh, megumipalm at focaled.com. And what for WhatsApp, 8180-3483-6555. Uh, Ms. Megumi Paul was born in India and migrated into um, the 19, 1917 and uh, migrated into Japan in, in uh, 1997. She, 
Uh, she's knowledgeable about uh, both the Indian education system also or higher ed systems in, in Japan. So she'll be um, give you a free consultation to, to make you feel more comfortable about applying for KUS. KUS. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'll let the floor open to your question. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Um, Takeda, for the very informative presentation. Now we can proceed with the Q&A session. There are a couple of questions in the Q&A portal. Sure, so sure. would you like me to pick up a few questions? Uh, yes, um, if you don't mind, may I ask, would you be able to pick up? And... Yeah, sure, sure, I'll help questions you. Questions for me, thank you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, um, so are there exchange programs for undergraduate students? And then, uh, what by exchange program student by exchange program? Or uh, what does it mean? Uh, like in, in um, this study context? abroad programs, like you go to another country for a couple uh, of semesters. Means the from KUS to yes. another country. Yes, they are. Uh, we have been um, we have been working with um, uh, U.S. Uh, like in our. Uh, let me see, uh, Tafutsu University in Massachusetts in the United States, also uh, uh, Ohio State University, which is ranked number 17 in the world college ranking. And also we have a strong tie with the most prestigious university in South Korea, um, Seoul National University. And yes, we have, we are so you, uh, you might have the chance to uh, visit those countries as an exchange students from KUAS. Okay. Um, does KUAS offer liberal arts or uh, programs in humanities? Um, actually, um, to be honest with you, no. Uh, no, not in an English language for international students, no. Okay. Um, is there aerospace engineering in undergraduate or graduate? Uh, so, uh, yeah, to answer you know, to answer his his, his or her questions, and which uh, may I, um, um, it all depends on what kind of aspects of aerospace in that he or she is interested. In. If she or he, if he or she is interested in uh, more like a material science, because the uh, rockets must be a light and also solid needs to uh, light and uh, materials at the same time, so very solid material materials. And then uh, you need you may or find learning about some material sciences is very interesting for your careers. And yes, and the material sciences uh, material science is the, the one of the uh, one of the speciality at KUS, then you are more than welcome to apply for KUS engineering if you are interested in material science in, in terms of uh, developing a knowledge about you know, rock, rocket science, sorry, aerospace. All right. Um, does KUAS offer scholarships, 100% scholarships? Oh yes, uh, yes, and a question. But uh, our uh, scholarship is only are available for uh, our exemplary top uh, academically, exemplary top performing students, and so not for everyone. Uh, our program is our uh, scholarship is available only on a uh, merit merit basis. Are there graduate programs in math or physics? Master of Physics. Uh, yes, and uh, um, if our uh, it uh, again it, it all depends on your uh, specific our uh, interest, academic interest, and you know, research interest. And then it's, uh, I'd highly recommend him or her to go to our website to find uh, who is going to be um, who can be a good our uh, mentor, uh, academic mentor for your research interest. If you, uh, if you are lucky enough to be able to find a good matching of professors from our, from our, our professor list, and then you can apply. Okay. Um, are there graduate or doctoral programs in AI or robotics? Oh, yes. And uh, um, I, uh, there are a few professors who, are in our, who has a very strong background in, the develop, in developing his expertise in the, around, an, around AI. Uh, so again, uh, he, he can be uh, recommended to go to our website to find the professors who are, who are, who is knowledgeable about those areas that he mentioned. Okay, um, we can pick up one more question. Um, are there 
free university programs for students in their 10th or 11th. Sorry, are there, uh, would are you say again? Are there internships or free university programs? So are there any programs for high school students that they could participate in? Like for students? So for, for high school students, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, no. No. Uh, yes. Uh, no. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Takeda, for answering okay. the questions. You could continue answering the questions um, in the Q&A portal. And it would be great if you could share a few links in the chat box. Sure. Thank you so uh, much for your time. Okay. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for everyone. Bye. Thank you. Um, I'll reshare the agenda slide. So now we have a presentation by Tokyo International University. So TIU is one of the well-renowned private universities in Japan. It possesses a highly diverse international learning environment with more than 1,400 students from 68 countries. It also provides an all-English curriculum to students interested in business, economics, and international relations. Job prospects are also wide for students graduating from their programs. Now I'd like to request Mr. Ben to give us an insight into the university. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction and thank you everyone for joining uh, us here today. We're really excited to be talking to all of you. And um, just during my presentation, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right. Um, so again, as was mentioned, I'm here representing Tokyo International University, and I'm here specifically to talk about our undergraduate English track program. Uh, for any of you interested in our graduate programs or our PhD programs, uh, that is not uh, the kind of area that I handle, but I will be putting the contact information for our graduate program in the chat after I'm done presenting, as well as uh, the links to our graduate program webpage so you can find out a little bit more information. Um, but why don't we go ahead and get started. So Tokyo International University um, is a university that's located about 35 minutes from the city center of Tokyo in an area called Kawagoi. And while we were founded in 1965, our English track program, which is the program that I'm here to speak with you all about today, began just six years ago in 2015. Now, in that time, as was mentioned, we have grown from around 40 international students to over 1,300. They make up about 20% of our overall student body. And these students come from 60 different countries around the world. What's really great is that you kind of see this diversity in your classes every day, you know, of kids from literally every continent on earth, including a number of students from, you know, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka. Um, so you'll kind of have that diversity from your peers. On top of that, we also have an extremely diverse faculty as well. 65% of our faculty come from outside of Japan, and they also come from around the world, from places like the US, Canada, France, Syria, Turkey, uh, Kenya, India, Sri Lanka, Taiwan, Indonesia. So again, this is something that you'll be getting not only from your peers, but from your professors as well. Now, I know I mentioned that we're located about 30 to 35 minutes by train from the city center of Tokyo. However, in 2023, so just two years from now, we'll be opening up a brand new campus right in the heart of Tokyo in an area called Ikebukuro. And this will be kind of our global campus. So any student that's coming and joining our English track program, this will be their campus. So if any of you are even applying for 2022 from your sophomore year onwards, this will be your campus. You'll have a brand new campus right in the heart of Tokyo. Just to talk a little bit about Tokyo, because I know that we've you know, already spoken a bit about why Japan is such a great option for students. Tokyo itself, we think, is a really great city for students. You know, beyond the fact that there's amazing public transportation that's really regular and on time, there's so many different things to do. It's one of the world food capitals. It's also surprisingly affordable for students compared to other kind of large cities in the world like London or Sydney or New York. And it's actually been ranked as the second best student city in the world by QS Magazine for multiple years in a row. Moving on to the English track program itself. Um, our program has three different majors. Um, 
We have uh, International Relations, which is a Bachelor of Arts. We have a brand new major in Digital Business and Innovation, which is a Bachelor of Science. And then we have a Bachelor of Arts in Business Economics as well. All of our degrees are four-year degree programs, although we do have uh, under, or, sorry, uh, early graduation options for high achieving students, and they are all taught in English. You don't need to know any Japanese before you come to our university. And in fact, most of our students do not. Um, again, just to touch on the graduate programs, we do have graduate programs in economics, digital business and innovation, and international relations, as well as PhD programs in economics and digital business and innovation. However, uh, I will not be talking about those today. And if you're interested, I will be putting the contact information for our graduate admissions team in the chat after my presentation. So just to talk a little bit about each major, our first one is business economics. So this is kind of your traditional business degree. We have a number of focus areas that you can choose to really sharpen your teeth uh, in those areas. So things like management, marketing, finance, economics. And our professors in particular really focus on teaching our students practical skills that they can use once they've graduated and are looking to enter the workforce, because that's the entire point of you coming to university, right? Um, so they're really focused on kind of those. Our brand new major, as I mentioned, is digital business and innovation. Now, this is a Bachelor of Science. Um, and we just began this program last year. Now, this major looks at the intersection of the business world and IT and technology. Um, it's a really modern major, and it's really the only major of its kind in Japan right now. Um, so while this major is a little bit more kind of science or math focused, um, and you can learn things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, we have a digital finance and fintech area that you can focus on, study things like cryptocurrencies or blockchain technology. Big data analytics, um, which is one of the kind of huge growing industry right now in the world, uh, digital marketing, things like that. Um, and again, with all of our majors, we have these focus areas for you to really, if you want to kind of pick an area to really kind of gain knowledge in, you can do that as well. Um, so this is a great modern major for students that are maybe a little more math or science minded. We also have some basic coding courses in this uh, as well. Along with this major, we opened up a uh, kind of innovation lab on campus in partnership with one of the leading IT companies in the world and in India called Tech Mahindra. Um, so we opened up this kind of research lab. And with this, uh, things, for example, like internships and job opportunities are going to become available for our students. But even during the pandemic, Tech Mahindra has really wanted to make the most of this partnership. So they began holding a career experience practicum course for our students. So our students in the DBI major were able to get real world experience and work with people who are in the industry and who are really leaders in the industry. And so this is something that you will be available to you if you decide to enroll in this program as well. Our final major is international relations. And this is for students who are looking to try to understand the world and how nations and other you know, non-state actors interact. We, of course, in this major have a number of different focus areas as well, kind of depending on what you want to study. And one thing that we like to point out about this major is just how flexible it is, uh, how versatile it is. Of course, many students who major in IR go on to do things like, you know, work for the UN or work for other large non-governmental organizations, maybe work for the government back home. Um, but a lot of our students do go on to do things like work in international business. Um, and because they've got this kind of international perspective, uh, they're actually, it's quite a, uh, you know, appealing major uh, for many companies as well. So if you're looking to kind of gain that international perspective, this can be a great major for you. Now, I did mention uh, that you don't need to know any Japanese before you come to our university. However, we do uh, require that all students take at least one semester at the university. And then if you'd like to continue studying Japanese, we really encourage you to do that as well, really, um, you know, continue studying that and maybe gain fluency in the Japanese language. Many of our students have done that. And again, most of our students come to the university knowing little to no Japanese. Um, so if you're looking to work in Japan, this can be a great option for you. Uh, now, we also know that moving to a new country uh, can be really scary, especially a country where you maybe don't speak the language or you're not as familiar with the culture. And so we do have an entire office dedicated to student life support. It's called the International Exchange Office. 
And they do things like, you know, pick you up at the airport during, uh, you know, your first time you arrive. They help everyone open up a bank account. Um, they help with visa renewal or can put you in contact with an English speaking real estate agent. And we also provide interpretation of any students do need an interpreter for the doctor or any other sort of emergency. Uh, we can provide that as well. On top of this, we do just like to remind students that we have a fully uh, halal and uh, vegetarian uh, dining hall on campus as well, a canteen. So if you do have kind of specific dining needs, we do have a place that you can take care of that on campus. On top of that, there are actually a number of different restaurants and a few supermarkets as well in the area that cater to those students as well. So if this is something that you're looking for, we do have that. We, of course, you know, love to talk about the number of different clubs we have available at our university, you know, everything from, you know, soccer, baseball, uh, you know, we have marathon uh, running as well, but we also have a number of non-sports clubs as well. So things like, you know, photography, hip hop, dance, we have a TEDx TIU club that just got started and is holding events. Um, and then we also have a model United Nations team as well that was started entirely by our international students. And so if this is something you're interested in, we really encourage you to join this club as well. Um, and for any students who have Model UN experience in high school and are looking to major in international relations, we do have a uh, enrollment fee waiver that they can apply for as well. We, of course, uh, have, you know, during non-pandemic times, we have an international festival that's held every year on campus. And this is a great way for our students to share their culture with not only fellow students, but with the local community as well. And it's one of the most popular events of the year. Uh, dormitories are also available for all of our international students. Uh, they are located on our campus two, which is just uh, about a 10 minute walk away from our campus one. Um, and we have a number of different options available. We have both single and shared rooms. They come fully furnished and students can live in them for up to one year. We also just like to mention that we have a number of different exchange programs available. So if that's something you're interested in doing, while you're in Japan, that is an option. We also do have a sister school in uh, uh, Oregon, uh, in Salem, Oregon, with Willamette University. Um, so, and they, we've got a number of different programs with them as well. One of the final things I like to talk about is our career center because you know every university has one, but we're really proud of our career center. Um, they cater to our international students, so they do both English and Japanese job hunting support. And they, of course, do everything that you expect, you know, resume review, interview practice, career counseling, but they'll also do things like, you know, we have a career fair every year on campus. They bring companies to campus to hold information sessions and talk with students, and they can even introduce you to companies that are looking to hire international students. Um, so just because of the way that the employment system works in Japan, most students begin job hunting at the end of their third year and spend their senior year in university job hunting. And for 2020, we actually had a 95% job placement rate for international students who were looking for jobs. Uh, now, this is for students who are looking both in Japan and abroad, although I think, uh, you know, the majority of them were looking in Japan. But, you know, you can expect this level of support, you know, 95% of the students who are looking were able to get a job offer prior to graduation. And I think that really just shows kind of our dedication to helping you once you've graduated. Um, on top of this, there is a job hunting visa that you can apply for for up to one year post graduation. So we'll just get into a little bit of the nitty gritty before we go to the Q&A. Um, we do just like to talk about the scholarships we have available. We have merit-based tuition reduction scholarships for students. Uh, so as you can see, we offer them at rates of 30, 50, 80, and 100%. Um, and again, these are merit-based. So they'll be looking at the same things that you use to apply. So, you know, your high school transcript, your English proficiency score, your personal statement, you know, any extracurriculars in your letter of recommendation. Um, and of course, you know, the higher the scholarship, the more difficult it is to get. It. But, uh, you know, the vast majority of our students are receiving some form of uh, tuition reduction scholarship. And even something like a 50% tuition reduction scholarship can save you about $20,000 over four years. So that's a really great option. Um, I also mentioned our Model UN scholarship. Uh, so if you are looking to major in international relations, this is something that's available to you. 
And then we also just like to talk about the JASO government scholarship um, that provides a living stipend for students, um, about 450 US dollars per month. This is a scholarship that many of our students apply for once they're enrolled in the university. And we have well over a 90% acceptance rate for this for our students as well. So this can really help you out during your first year. Students can also work part-time in Japan, up to 28 hours per week during the semester. And we have a number of uh, kind of student teams on campus that are paid positions as well. So that's something that you can hopefully uh, look forward to. And then just finally, to talk a little bit about eligibility. Um, uh, as I mentioned, we do require an English proficiency test. Our minimum score for is uh, 5.5 for the IELTS. Um, however, you know, just so you know, uh, the higher your English proficiency score, uh, the better your chances to get a better scholarship, you know. Um, so right now, our average student is, you know, getting around between a 6.0 and a 6.5 on IELTS. So really aim for something like that. And then just uh, finally, key dates for both our April and September intake. We have another application period for our April intake coming up uh, in September and then another one in November. And then if you're looking to join us next September, we have uh, application periods, one in November this year and three more next year in January, February, and April. All right, uh, thank you everyone so much for listening to my presentation. Um, now we can move on to a look uh, kind of through the questions and see if there's anything that anybody asked. Um, Actually, Mr. Ben, um, most of the questions have been answered by our oh, panelists. Um, but I guess I can ask a few common questions to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, are there, is IELTS or TOEFL a mandatory for students? So we require, so there's a number of English tests that we accept, you know, IELTS, TOEFL, TOEIC, the Pearson PTE, the Cambridge, and then if any students uh, are in an IB program, we do accept the IB English scores, any students who are in IGCSE, we do accept the O level uh, as their English score, we also accept um, the SAT or the ACT can be used as an English score, although we do not require those tests. Um, and then also Duolingo, uh, which can be taken online because we know that the pandemic has made a lot of testing centers closed down. That's another great option for students and we're seeing a lot of students take advantage of that. So we try to be really flexible. We have lots of different ones, but yes, we do require um, an English proficiency score unless they have uh, taken the last six years of their education in uh, an English speaking country. Okay, and are there any graduate or doctoral um, programs at your university? Yeah, so we do have uh, graduate programs in economics, digital business and innovation, and international relations. And we also have PhD programs in economics and digital business and innovation. Afterwards, I'll go ahead and post the link to our graduate webpage, um, as well as the uh, email address for our graduate admissions team. Okay. Um, actually, there's one question in the Q&A portal. Um, one student has asked, um, how many seats are there for international students? Yeah. Um, oh, there's a number of questions. I will kind of handle these. Um, so we don't kind of have like a hard cap for international students or for students from any country. Um, you know, at the moment, we have about 1,300 international students, and we're seeing the number of international students, kind of that proportion, increase every year. Um, so kind of each year we're seeing more and more international students. So there's no kind of hard limit. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, and then uh, somebody asked if you're doing your bachelor's in English literature, can you apply again for a bachelor's program in international relations? You definitely can do that. You can apply either as a new student or you can apply as a transfer student as well. Um, you know, it's just good maybe to talk about why you're looking to change. Um, but our transfer students are also eligible for scholarships, so that's something to consider. And then finally, somebody asked, is there a product management course in TIU? So we don't have like a specific major in product management, but uh, we have students who have gone through our business economics program who are doing uh, like things in like product management and working kind of in that field. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, it's definitely an opportunity for you uh, within our business economics major. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Ben, for answering the questions. You can continue answering um, questions in the Q&A portal yeah, when other universities are present. Thank you so much right. for your time. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Um, I'll reshare the agenda slide.
So now we have a presentation by Akita University. So Akita University is recognized as an acclaimed national university in Japan. It provides world-class education in a diverse range of disciplines. The study abroad programs at Akita University stand out as it provides a variety of support measures to its students like tuition fee waivers and credit transfers. The university has successfully been able to produce influential society contributors. Now I'd like to request Professor Mishima to give us an insight into the university. Okay, thank you for the introduction. My name is Nozon Mishima and I'm teaching mechanical engineering, especially environmentally benign design methodology in Graduate School of Engineering Science and Faculty of engineering science in Akita University. So uh, this is my third time uh, to participate in this webinar as a presenter from Akita University. I have had several contacts by now, but unfortunately I have, I have not heard concrete uh, will for application. But if you're considering to uh, enroll in the postgraduate study in, in, well, public university in, in Japan, I think this is, this year is a very good opportunity. Uh, well, I, we, you may have certain um, advantages in examination. So I will explain that point later. But first, let me share uh, the slide. Okay. So, thank you for listening to the explanation of Akita University. Akita University is uh, one of the national universities in Japan, uh, consisting both undergraduate and graduate programs. And, well, it can trace history back to 1910, uh, Akita Mining School, which was established more than 100 years ago. So we have a long uh, history, knowledge, and background in resource science and related engineering. So um, this is a uh, famous Akita Inu. So Akita Prefecture is known for the homeland of Akita Inu, which is rather famous in worldwide because it was presented to, well, Russian ice skater. And there's the facility to, well, yeah, after the, the virus thing and finished, uh, there'll be a facility in Akita near the station. And Akita is, uh, local city in Japan, but it is easily reachable from uh, major cities in Japan. And it is about one hour flight from Tokyo. So uh, compared to the long way from uh, Southwest Asia to Japan, it's uh, one more step to Akita. And we have three campuses in Akita city. Uh, the Tegata campus here is the main campus where engineering science and uh, international resource science belongs. And every um, things are necessary things are in walkable distances. So it is very convenient and comfortable for international students. Usually does not have, do not have cars. And, and we have about 5,000 um, students, 4,000, 4,300 in undergraduate and 700 in postgraduate. And international number of international students is not really large here, but at least for international resource science and engineering science, uh, international students are important members to maintain our, our study and research activities as well. And Admission for self-funded international students are scheduled twice a year for undergraduate uh, students and once a year for undergraduate students. And for undergraduate students, well, I, I have read that the EJU 
<coughs> has been uh, canceled this year for some because of the virus virus situation. But in such case, uh, the former EJU, um, well, sorry, um, result can be used. And both first session and second session of EJU can be used for undergraduate admissions. And for graduate students, there are uh, <coughs> twice uh, examinations in, per year. And for this year, at least for this year, I, I have not well recommended to provide this information very widely, but at least for this year, the interview test for international students will be uh, carried out online. So at least for this year, you, can, you don't have to come to Japan to take the examination, uh, take the test for graduate students. So I think this is one of the big advantage uh, for international students this year. Okay, so as for Faculty of Resource, International Resource Science, it consists of three departments, Department of Resource Policy and Management, and the second one department is Department of Earth Resource Science and Department of Earth Resource Engineering and Environmental Science. Well, the second faculty is Faculty of education, uh, which consists of Department of School Education and Department of Regional Studies and Humanities. Well, since I'm from engineering fields, I'll skip the, these faculties. Um, the third one here is Faculty of Medicine, which consists of Medicine and Health Sciences. And uh, the last faculty here is Faculty of Engineering Science, which where I belong. It consists of four departments and eight courses from um, starting from life science and through systems design engineering, engineering. And the upper side is rather scientific side and then, and the lower side is engineering side. So uh, we provide rather wide area in science and engineering. And this is a message, uh, what I would like to uh, provide for international students. And we are providing various support system for international students, uh, such as counseling or university health center and tutor system as well. And what I'd like to uh, put emphasis on is that in our graduate school, you cannot finish your study without Japanese. Well, we are trying to increase the classes uh, in English, but still uh, you, you need some Japanese skill to finish your study here. But please consider that if your goal is to find a position in Japanese company, private companies, uh, please consider that Japanese private companies require rather high level of Japanese. So in that sense, Akita University is a perfect circumstance to study your major plus Japanese because, well, unfortunately, um, English level of our student is not, not really high. So you have to speak some Japanese to uh, make friends here. And <clears throat> local people in Akita usually do not speak English. So you have to speak some Japanese to live here. So in that sense, and well, our lecturer like me can speak some English and some Japanese as well. So we can make some uh, supplementary explanation uh, in Japanese and English. So in that sense, Akita University is a perfect circumstance to study your major plus Japanese at the same time. Okay, so, um, the serious part of my presentation is has finished, so uh, this is uh, fun side. So uh, this is the uh, cherry blossom in famous cherry blossom in nearby city, Kakunodate city, and it has a re samurai residences remaining in the city, and so it's a rather famous sightseeing spot. And also, well, unfortunately, 
last year and this year, uh, this firework festival has been canceled, but it will restart it. I hope it will restart it from next year. This is one of the three major firework festivals in Japan. And one of the uh, three major firework festival is, is performed in Omagari City, which is also a nearby city from Akita City. So firework festival. And also Carl lives in uh, Oyaskyo, which is also uh, the Akita prefecture is in the middle of thick natural beauty. So you can um, enjoy turning leaves in the valleys. And also there's uh, many ski grounds around in the perfect Akita prefecture and around the university. So this is, uh, this lake here is the deepest lake in Japan, uh, Lake Tazawa. So around the lake, there's many skiing ground. And also um, hot spring is also what I would like to put emphasis on. Uh, this is a photo from Newto Hot Spring uh, near the Lake Tazawa, which I, um, well, introduced. And I think this is one of the best hot spring in Japan. And uh, one spe special feature of the area, Akita Prefecture is that, uh, that is one of the uh, area in Japan, uh, cultural, traditional culture remains most. So uh, we can provide some uh, cultural events for international students. And there's also a uh, big festivals, famous festivals in, uh, it is called uh, three major, one of the three major festivals in Tohoku area, Northeast Japan. And this is the Kanto festival. And it, it was also canceled last year and this year, but it will, I hope it will recover from next year. Uh, anyway. Um, the Kanto performer uh, put this big uh, traditional lantern tower on their hips, uh, shoulders, or even head, and stroll along the boulevard, city boulevard. And Akita University also has a Kanto team. And uh, the, in the musical performing section, the Akita University's team is, is rather doing rather good. And he's one of the administrative sub, and he used to be the uh, solo performance, uh, used to be the champion in solo performance section before. So you can enjoy, uh, you can join the Kanto, Akita University's Kanto team if you'd like to, and then uh, participate in, in the traditional festival. And also we are providing uh, various, well, if the situation allows international students Trip, winter trip to another fire festival or summer trip to surrounding uh, agriculture area or natural area and so on. And the big, um, well, the atmosphere, so sorry, atmosphere, uh, Atmosphere here is very warm and people are warm here. I'm not talking about that the temperature is warm. The temperature itself is rather cold, but atmosphere is warm and, and you can enjoy the uh, remaining traditional culture of Japan here. Okay, so if you'd like to know the detail of the university and uh, or admissions, please take a look at this web page here. And if you have a specific question, well, I can answer now, but also you can uh, contact me by via email as well. And we are waiting for you to come over here. And as I explained, uh, this year's uh, admission test will have a uh, big advantages. You, you don't have to come to Japan, at least for graduate school. So please take the opportunity.
Okay, that's uh, the end of my presentation, basically. So I'm open for questions. Thank you, so, thank you so much, Professor Mishima, for the very detailed presentation. Now we can proceed with the Q&A session. There are a couple of questions in the Q&A portal. So would you like to pick up a few questions or would you want to pick up a few questions? Okay, so let, let me. Um, it might be a little confusing, so I can pick up a few questions for you. Uh -huh. mm. Um, a student has asked if there is if there are graduate programs in biotechnology or microbiology. Uh, biotechnology, yes, we we have we have we we have uh, some uh, biotechnology uh, related to research topics in our life science course and applied chemistry course. And also we have a, a medical and, and say medical engineering collaborating uh, new graduate school for medical engineering collaboration. So in that sense, uh, well, it depends on the topics, but I think you can you you might be able to find some uh, interesting topics in your in our faculty or graduate school. I think. For the specific topic, I, I need to check whether, well, this topic we have or this topic we don't have. But basically, yes. Okay. Uh, how about nutrition? Are, is there uh, pro other programs in nutrition at Akita University? Other program for, sorry. Yeah. Um, nutrition. So more about food. And uh, I see. Well, as far as I know, we, we don't have a such a department or such, well, specific labor laboratory or specific lecturer who carries out such research topics or educational area. Okay. Um, can students learn uh, different other languages at Akita University? Other languages means other than English and Japanese. Yes. yes. Um, actually, Japanese is also included. So, can they learn Japanese while um, specializing in, for example, um, in, uh, in yes, uh, we have uh, Japanese courses only, uh, well, specialized for international students. Okay. So, yes. Um, are there any opportunities for high school students at Akita University? I, well, for international high school students, uh, unfortunately, no. Um, how can students contact the faculty members of Akita University? Well, um, you can uh, send email to our administrative se section for for enrollment, or you can, well, send an email to me, and I, I, I can, I can provide, I can, well, transfer your request to other specific lecturers or specific professors, okay. if you'd like um, to. So, both ways is possible. All right. Um, there's one student who already has a bachelor's degree in physics, mm -hmm. but can that student again apply? for the uh, undergraduate engineering program at Akita University? It's, well, possible. Well, I, well, if, if, you, if, if you all uh, still have a, uh, if you already have a bachelor degree, but still you would like to apply for the undergraduate program, it's possible, well, by taking the EJU and other, well, examination for enrollment we can uh, you can answer two more questions um one question is are there postdoctoral fellowship programs at akita university uh postdoctoral fellowship program i think well we, we don't have a specific uh good program for 
uh, postdoc. I think, honestly speaking, I, I think it'd better well uh, look for other research institutes such as, say, AISD in Tsukuba or something for postdoctoral program. Not really good one in ACT universities. Sorry about that. And are there fully funded scholarships at the university? Um, as well as other national universities in Japan, we don't have any specific or, or university specific uh, scholarship program. Uh, you can well look for any private and public scholarship program in, in Japan by uh, just those page. Uh, I can well provide you the information later if you'd like to. And for the support for international students in Akita uh, University, uh, likely as, as, as well as other Jap Japanese national universities is tuition reduction system. And as far as I know, most of the international students are taking some uh, tuition reduction, 50% reduction or 100% reduction, I think. So well, the support, what uh, Akita University is providing for international students is tuition reduction system, mostly. Okay. Um, one last question. Um, how can students apply for the doctoral programs at the university? Well, um, Akita University has a, a special doctoral program for English, in English. So, uh, I see, I, I don't have the uh, application guideline right now, but if you'd like to, I can send you, if you need, uh, require me by email, I can send the uh, guideline for application. Um, a couple of students uh, want the um, contact, uh, the email address that they can use for contacting the university. So oh. if you could, it would be great if you could um, share a few uh, links in the chat box so that students can contact the university directly. Uh, chat box, okay, here. For um, students, um, I would recommend you to take a picture of the slide that is being displayed right now as the email address is also provided. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Mishima, for sharing the email address. Okay. Well. And, yes. Sorry. Or the email address is also provided here, and then you can check the our website for detailed information as well. Right. Um. Thank you so much, Mr. Mishima, for answering the questions. Um. We, I would like to share the agenda slide once again. Um, Mr. Mr. Mishim, okay. I think I can, yes, I can. Thank you so much, Mr. Mishima, once again for the presentation. Thank you. Um, so this marks the end of our webinar. Thank you to all the panelists and attendees for participating in today's webinar. The recordings of the webinars conducted earlier are uploaded to the U Tokyo India office site. The link is shared in the chat box. And for more information about Japanese universities, please join us in our upcoming webinars. You could register by scanning the QR code on this page. And also please feel free to contact the universities personally for additional information. Once again, thank you for attending the webinar and we hope to see you in the coming webinars.